You cannot carry the name of Jesus and walk like a victim. No, no, no. It's a simple word. It is God's will to heal you. It is God's will to heal you. God wants to see you healed. You know, I never thought that uh, I never thought that I will teach about healing. Reason being, I had a religious mind that you just quote a scripture, you are done. They will tell you, no, just say Isaiah 53 verse 5, by his stripes I'm healed. And when Holy Spirit began to prompt me to go deeper into healing, I realized that no, no wonder why the church is sick. When I say why the church is sick, why we have the sick among ourselves in the church. And he said to me, check among the 12 apostles who are sick. None. There is no reported sickness for any of them. It's, the Bible speaks about Peter's mom who had fever, whom Jesus Christ healed, and Maria Magdalene that she, that she was delivered from seven demons. Those are the closest to sickness that the apostles got. And, uh, and he said to me, no, why is the world like this? I said, okay, let's talk God. And we had a, a wonderful conversation. And I'm going to share with you this conversation this morning. Hallelujah. How many of you are born again here? Yeah? Because th this word is for those who are born again. I won't mind starting by praying for those who are not born again so that they can receive this word. Everybody who has received the Lord Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. Uh, glory be to God. Glory, glory to be to God. If you are all born again, it is good because I was going to start there because this word is for those who have received the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. You are a spirit man. I want you to understand that. I want you to understand that you are a spirit man living in a body with a soul. That's why, if, if you want to understand more about healing, your first understanding should be that you are a spirit. And what gets sick is your body. And that torments your soul. Amen? How is your soul tormented? When you are sick, you are not happy. Am I right? You don't do what you want to do. You get sad, like you get tormented, like why can't I get up my bed and do this? So, there is one important aspect that I also want you to understand before I go to the word. You are a new creation. You who are born again, you are what? A new creation. All things has passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. But where is that newness of life in you? The newness of life is in, in you. It's in your spirit, man. Hallelujah. It's where? It's in your spirit. It is your spirit man that is born again. In other words, when you are born again, you, you, God did not recycle the old you and put you in your body. He has given you a new you. Are we, are we together? That, that's, that's one of the first fundamentals of healing. God has given you a new you. In the image of who? Christ. So the old person 
who used to do all those things. They, I'm talking about the spirit man. does not exist. But the issue is one. The flesh and the soul wants to hold on to the old nature. Whereas the spirit man wants to release the new you to your flesh and soul. Can I repeat that again? Your flesh and the soul want to hold on to what? To the old you. For example, you are from a family where at the age of 60, they die of particular disease. The soul and the flesh will fight to hold on to that curse. Your spirit man will be saying, no. Romans 8.2 For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and what? And death. So now, there are two laws competing for your life. One law is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which is embedded in your spirit man. Your spirit man is Christ-like. When you speak, you speak like who? Christ. And the other law is the law of sin and death. That one, your soul and your body are so related to that law. That's the reason why everybody will say, you know what? Ah, hey, yeah, the way is so cold. Do, do you know why you're speaking like that? Do you know why speaking like that? It's the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death wants you to speak death, death, death until death manifests. I'm going to give you an example. When Abraham sinned, it took him 900 years to die. Why didn't he die instantly? The law of the spirit of life in him was still at work until Satan decided to change the language on earth. People begin to speak death. As they speak, they begin to manifest it. Death and life are in the power of your what? Of your tongue. Hallelujah. Hey, this headache is killing me. I wanted to start there. This headache is what? It's killing me. No, we don't speak like that. I'm just giving you an intro. I want, I want, to see, I want you to see the two yous in you. The spirit man, the one who is like Jesus Christ, who is a new man. Okay, can you go to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17? 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 quickly. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. What does it say? Yeah, now we did Send Therefore, if any man is what? No, no, no. If any man is with Christ, no. If any man knows Christ, no. If any man is in Christ, he's a what? He's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. Where is this newness of life? In your spirit man. That, that is why Jesus Christ said, out of your belly shall flow. What? Rivers of what? Living water. Which belly is talking about? He's not talking about your malamuhod, no. He's talking about out of your spirit man shall flow what? Life. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Are we together? So, I want us to hold on to these two things. Why am I teaching this word today? We are living in interesting times. 
Romans 8, 19 says, For the endless expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Until, listen to this, you want to see this world healthy? You want to see this world living a, a healthy life it, until you manifest. There's something that God was telling me, and it's going to happen. You are saying, as people pass through this, whoever is sick will be healed. Do you know why? Because God wants people to pass next to you and be healed. Okay, today I'm not excited because I'm not teaching you that you are blessed. Ne? Hmm? I must say you are blessed. Then you jump and hit the roof. Amen. You are, I see a car coming to you. Amen. With a goat inside. Amen. <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to teach you life. Why, why, why do you need to, to receive this teaching? You have a family. If there, if one of the few, one of the few things that I love about this church, I rarely receive calls for sick people. I received testimonies, Pastor, this and this was happening to our children. We prayed for them, and they are healed. We applied what you taught us. Read Second Romans eight verse nineteen. Romans 8 verse 19. What does it say? Say the world is waiting for me to manifest Christ. Say, say the world is waiting for me for me to manifest who? Christ. Let me just pause it here. I'm, I'm going to the end of the sermon now. The reason why you are being taught today, somebody will tell you that you are sick. And you'll just say, I know what, in the name of Jesus, you are healed. Without laying hands on them. And they will walk out healed. Now, I want us to deal with three, with one myth, and then we continue. There is an era or time of healing crusades where men of God will come, lay hands on people, people will be healed. And since then, the church has been locked into that era. The church has not got out. Church is still associating healing with a person, not with Christ. That's why many are carrying, is there anybody who's carrying anointing oil from somewhere here? Oh, thank God we don't have. That's why many are walking around with oils, pa packet of salt, like Utoya Kuchisanyama anytime. <laughs> pa packet of salt, healing salts and all those things and others are carrying you know handkerchiefs and all that you know what because healing has been associated with a person there is a person who will pray for you and be healed and that has locked up the church to a place of dependency the church can't think beyond the name of the person we are going to pastor the garden no that man, when he lays in, you'll be healed. It is good and well. There's nothing wrong with that. But that is the beginning of the healing ministry. It is not the end-to-end -end process. Let me tell you why people, God allows that to help him. The proper healing takes place when you receive the word manifest it in you, believe it until your spirit man override the belief system of your soul and your body. Okay. Am I talking to someone? 
Can I, tell you, can I tell you about proper healing? When you grasp the word of God, you eternalize it. You meditate upon it until your spirit man overrides the belief system of your soul and your body follow suit. That's healing. However, there is a healing for the, for the children. And that is the healing that has been propagated by the healing ministries. The healing for the, which one is that? Those ones who have not received the word. Amen? Those who can't dissect the word. We call them carnal-minded Christians. They believe that if he or she lays my hands on me, I'll be what? I'll be healed. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. And even the Bible said, call for the old elders who will come with what? With anointing oil. They will anoint you and you'll be, what? You'll be healed. That's, the, that's in James. There's nothing wrong with that. My problem with that is that it has become what? A dogma. It has become something that all Christians are boxed there. They are boxed where? In the laying of hands in the oil, salt and vinegar, you know, all those things, you know, they are, they are, they are cornered there. And so, Christians now, even the ones who pray in tongues, I want to put it to you, I want to challenge you, the one who prays in spirit, run around looking for somebody to lay hands on them. Spirit-filled, carrying the same spirit, that rose Christ from the dead. Speaking through you. Speaking through your tongue. And yet you cannot believe for your own healing. Because we are boxed. Am I still going to pray for the sick? Yes, I will do that. But I want us to learn something else. Mark 16, Mark, 7, Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. There are three types of major healings. Of, of, I want you to, 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 to look at this, three types. Number one is the healing for the world. Number two, the one that I just spoke about, the canal children, the one that you lay hands. Number three is the healing for those who are spiritual. Spirit-filled, world practitioners, Christians. Those who stand up and say, body, you are sick in your head. You, you want me to be sick? I mean, I have to go to church and now I must deal with these symptoms. No, no, no. Virus, you cannot do that. You cannot deceive my body to sickness. No, wait, am I young? I won't entertain you. And then you step out of your room, you are healed. Those are world practitioners. But the church has been locked in the middle. Healing through the elders of laying of hands, the oil. But I want us to tell you what is the church. I want us to discuss what is the church. It said, and this signs shall accompany them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They shall speak in new tongues. Let us go to 18. They shall take up serpents. They shall drink any deadly thing and it will not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Whom is the Bible talking about? Them that believe. You. You. Who believes? Can you go to 17? It says, and this sign shall accompany them that believe. You cannot wake up in this weather and go to church if you don't believe. What took you out of your bed? You, because you have faith. What took you out of your bed? Because you believe. So the funny part, them that believe are not being accompanied by signs and wonders, are accompanied by anointing oil and salt and vinegar. Am I talking to someone? Yes. Say, I believe. I believe. 
So the world is waiting for them that believe. And check how many churches do we have in South Africa? And yet we are a sick nation. Because everybody is waiting for someone to lay hands on someone. I'm not saying hey, I can't call pastor to lay hands on me. You will say, but you believe. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I know you. I know you guys. I know how you think. No, no, no. I'm not how you think. No. Grow. I, I'm pushing you out of your comfort zone. You know, when the eagle want the, the little eagles to fly, what does it do? Every day it take out what? A feather and leaves until those thorns come up. And they say it's time to water it. So I'm taking out feathers one by one. Ne? One by one, ne? not at once. So let's check this. Say, neighbor, it is you who believes. No, say that. Say, it is you who believes. Say, there are signs and wonders that wants to accompany you. Hmm. Am I talking to someone? So imagine. Imagine. Uh, 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 uh. Can, can, can you just be like your pastor? I, mean, I, I think in movies and pictures. Imagine when you're walking around, there is, a, there is a miracle of healing this side. It's working with you, holding your hand. This one is the miracle of deliverance. In front of you is, is the miracle. It's is, is a, is a sense of, of wonders. Anything that you want. Behind you is the glory. Th those who believe. Those who believe. That, that's why Peter said, and Paul, silver and gold we do not have. What we have, we shall give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and what? And walk. He did not say, hey, my brother, hey, it's hey, your timing for it. If I knew that I'm going to meet you now, if I knew, had I knew that I'm going to meet you next time, no, second, second half, I'm coming back, and then you see me and you anointing. Just remind me, Pelan, can I really well? Can I when you are for anointing oil? Because Copan Long, while it's why, okay, anointing oil, it's why, anointing oil. No, no, that is not our gospel. <laughs> no, those who believe in the name, we're talking about the name of Jesus, the name above all names. The name that creates. The name that separated the waters and the land. The name that called forth Lazarus from the dead. The name, the name of Jesus. Do you believe in that name? If you believe in the name, you shall walk with signs and wonders. They shall accompany you. You don't need anything else. All that you need is to put your faith upon the name of Jesus. I'm not going to teach you anything else. The name. The name. Why? Let us go to the Bible. I want to show you something. Isaiah 52 verse 14. We're going to come back to these three major healings. Isaiah 52 verse 14. I love the name of Jesus. The name. Isaiah 52 verse 14. Like as many were astonished at thee. His visage was so made more than any man. And his form, his form more than the sons of men. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Many of you, I blame religion also. The deformation of the face of Jesus Christ and his body was not only because of the beating. The Bible says he took all our infirmities. Do you know what happened to, 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 to his face? Jesus had cancer in his body on the cross. He had tumors. He had growth. He had boils. He had all forms of sicknesses. And those sicknesses deformed him. 
because he was carrying all sicknesses. He was so deformed such that he, they, he could not be looked at as a son of man. Meaning, he, looked, he reached a stage where he looked like a, a zombie or an animal. Why? He carried all the sicknesses, the boils, the cancer, the growth, the tumors, all those things, they were in his body. His face looked like cancer, tumor, everything. He carried them. Something that you didn't know. He carried them. So there is no disease. There is no sickness that Jesus Christ has not yet carried. They say COVID is new. COVID is not new. It's just a type of flu. It's just a type of flu. It is not new. He had carried it also. He had, his lungs were deformed also. His face was deformed because of the pain. He has carried all this sickness. If you believe in him, you will know that in that name, all the sicknesses were taken care of. That's why Jesus Christ said, if you believe in me, signs and wonders will follow them. Why signs and wonders? He knows that there's no more space for sickness. They're taken care of. Am I talking to someone? Don't speak death. Said, okay, can, can we read it in other versions? Oh, I just want to check it out. Isaiah, I want you to see something. Pastor, does that mean that if I have cancer, it is sorted already? Yes, it is sorted already. Growth, yes, it is sorted. Tumor, it is done. Barrenness, he was barren on the cross. And everything, he carried everything. That's why the Bible said in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was so much in agony. He looked at what coming his way. He looked at the, at the traffic of diseases, sicknesses, infirmities coming his way. Accompanied by sins and curses. Because there is no sickness and disease and sickness that are, that are not accompanied by sin and cases. He looked at them all. Faith said, you know what? I know the root cause of these things is sin. I'm going to deal with it. Second one, I know the root cause is curse. I'm going to deal with it. And as he received the sin, as he received the curse, the sickness is followed. You are not a cursed person. He died for your sins, for your past, present, and future sins. You, you, you cannot be cursed. So I want to tell you that how many of you were in the car today? It doesn't matter, taxi. You were driving a car, eh? Were your windows open or closed? Why? Because it's too cold, eh? So you did not want the external to affect the internal. Am I right? Just like your spirit man, when Jesus Christ died, he sealed you inside the salvation so that the external sins, curses, that carries diseases and sicknesses cannot affect you. Okay. You did you, 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 you. You didn't get that one. You didn't get that one. Let me repeat it. You are sealed inside salvation. Change your mindset. As much as you have closed your car windows, your house doors and windows and all that, so that the external environment does not affect the internal environment. Am I right? Also, salvation has sealed you inside. Don't let unbelief open the windows. Am I talking to someone? Don't let unbelief open the doors. 
Did you see the statistics? Ah, we are gone. I mean, I'm telling you, ah, we are dead. Dead, 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 like dead. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, some of us will die seven times. Yeah, no, no. The, the way people love to die, they die many times. Okay, let me read. I want it with NIV. Okay. Okay, it's refusing. Okay, say, so just as many were astonished at you, so his visage was made more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. I don't like it that way. I want you to, I want you to have a picture of a person coughing. Do that. Look at, look at the face of that picture of a person coughing, how, how do they look? Jesus Christ had that look also for you. Hey, Pastor, today we are going to be man. Why is it like a COVID, we want money. <laughs> you want money? You're going to spend money in the hospital? Hmm? I'm not going to talk about money. The script of today is saying we are healed. The script of today is saying, why? Saying what? And what gets healed first? It's your mind. As I'm talking to you right now, your mind is getting healed. My daughter was vomiting and all that on Monday. It's Monday, isn't it? Tuesday, yeah, yeah, Tuesday, as I, was, as I was at church, I went to attend my spiritual father's church in Pretoria, as I was there, Holy Spirit said, you forgot to teach her to command her body, she must remind her body what happened on the cross, I picked up the phone, I said, can you talk, she said, yes, okay, now let's talk, talk to your body now, remind your body what happened on the cross, we had, she she had a conversation with her body. She said, tell your body, remember what Jesus on the, on the cross. She, she, talks, she said, tell your body that it doesn't have any right to carry any sickness. She told she her. When I came back, she was playing, eating, and the next day she went to school. She didn't go to the doctor. She reminded, she reminded her body about salvation. I want to talk to parents. I do take my children to doctors when there is a need. I'm not going to lie to you. But my doctor is not the first option. Let every time when there is an issue in your house concerning sickness, let this be your first option. Kneel down Command your body. I said this last week. Everything that is working negatively around your life right now is working on the ticket of deception. Can I, can I repeat that again? Everything that is working around is working on the ticket of what? Deception. Sickness a virus come, deceive the body, the body believes what? Death more than life. And they start doing what? Deteriorating. And the word comes, tells the body that no, Jesus has done that, and the body starts receiving life. So it's all about deception. Okay, am I talking to someone? It's all about what? Deception. The first sin was the sin of what? Deception. So, when your body is sick, it is pro-what? Pro-death than pro-life. It has been deceived to believe more about death than life. NIV, about the same scripture, and then we proceed. We are about to go now. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond beyond that of any human being, 
and is for man beyond human likeness. Who is that? Jesus Christ. Why did he carry that? Because you are not supposed to carry them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let us go to Mark 16. We'll be closing now. Mark 16, verse 17. Next week is one of the greatest Sunday services we will ever have. Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs which shall accompany them that believe in my name, they shall cast out demons, and they shall speak with new tongues. Let us stop there. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. I want to show you something that you know. Or maybe you don't know. Teddy Wootsy Fella Yena Wootira Teddy Wootsy Fella Yena Wootira Teddy Wootsy Fella Look, look, ten nineteen. I want you to see this. Behold, I give you the authority to trample upon on what serpents and what and over what and nothing shall but do what enemies do what hurt me. Say, say, I have authority. To tread upon serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall hurt me. So now. I want to trample upon them. Hmm? <laughs> Do that. <laughs> it is not about that. Serpents is little devils. Amen. Behind every sickness, there are little devils. Amen. They are what? Little devils. And scorpions, they are a type of demons also. It is not literal scorpions. Jesus Christ is saying, the enemy operates through little devils and scorpions. However, I have given you what? Authority. Check him. The Bible does not say, I've given you power. Power is for what? It's for lifting up. If I want to lift up my child, use what? Power. Authority is for what? Commanding. What does that make you? Say commander in chief. Not YEFF. No, no, no. <laughs> it makes you commander in chief. When you speak, demons listen. They say, What? He has spoken. When you wake up, when you wake up in the street, they say, Ah, 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 Takan is awake. I thought maybe you killed him. No, my friend. I was five kilometers away. And I just found Christ. I couldn't see Takane. What happened to Takane? No, I couldn't see him. Because he is in Christ. And when he speaks, it's like Christ speaking. Why? He has authority. What is authority? Exosia. Power to command. So the Bible is saying, you are not normal. You have authority in the spiritual realm. This, Luke 10, 90 is talking about spiritual realm. Same in the spiritual realm, precious, when you speak, things stop. Before you can say, in the name. I remember there was a day, some years back, I was not feeling good. Not at all. I was driving, going to work. And I picked up the phone and called my spiritual father. 
The moment he said, hello, I was healed. He said, I was healed, like totally healed. I said, Daddy, I wanted to tell you that I was feeling dizzy and I had heart pulse. Okay, why? He said, why all of them are past tense now? I said, the moment you said, hello, I was healed. He said, no, they understand authority. They understand what authority. They know that what is saying. So now, now when I was saved, now you are the authority. You are what? The authority. You, uh, I look at a funny video. The woman, uh, her puppies were about to be mauled by a bear. How many of you saw that video? She ran, she pushed the bear away, take her puppies and ran back with them. I said, you know what? When there is love, there is no fear. Perfect fear, cast away what? Perfect love, cast away what? All fears. So that's the love that Jesus Christ has given you. When you look at any demon of sickness, the last thing that must happen to you is fear. Why? Because the media is preaching fear more than anything else. And some people get sick before they become sick. Yeah, some people, uh, I was somebody telling me that I, I went to test for COVID. And the moment that I saw positive, <laughs> headache at home. <laughs> yeah. And then my body followed suit. Then I was bedridden. But what happened before you, you saw that you were positive? Can I tell you what causes that? You believed. What? SMS. Positive. I believe COVID is in my body. In the name of Jesus, I believe I'm sick. This, this, this is not going to be well. Oh. This is going to be difficult. And they say the first symptoms is headache. It is here. I knew it. Let me wait. They say body aches. It is here. I knew it. It, it, it might sound like a joke, but it is your belief system. But when it comes, I said to my wife, I believe we have had COVID in our house. She, she said, why? I said, no, we, I felt all the symptoms and I rebuked them. Because I went somewhere. They came to my body. I said, I, I don't know if you are here because of COVID. COVID. Or Uchomia flu, either way, you are not welcome. So, so just go. Stay put. Stay put. Stay put. I'm, I'm, I'm refusing to believe you to work in my body. Why? I have authority to tread upon. To tread upon. What is to tread upon? Many of you don't know what, what is to tread upon. Can I tell you something? To tread upon, it doesn't mean to negotiate. It means to take authority. You are stepping upon. You are on top. And everything else is under. You are not negotiating with Satan. You are not telling Satan whether I should be well or not. You are saying, Satan, I don't know how this disease works. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. But I know one thing. Jesus Christ carried all my sicknesses. He carried all my infirmities. That's one thing that I know. I might not know how you operate, but Jesus Christ was deformed so that I can be well. I'm tripping, I'm tripping upon you. I am well. I'm trading up. I refuse to, to listen to your voice. Some of you, because Linali Day with a Google after this symptom, what I feel. Did service I hold the class or so on? Okay. No, they are not each yet. Let, 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 let me check the next one. And this symptom, uh, you know what you are doing? You are programming your belief system. Go for the word. They say I'm positive. 
Okay. Positive. The last time I looked at positive, it was another mad sign. It's a plus. I don't know what I'm adding now, whether I'm adding a car or a house, but it's a mad sign. But all that, I know that by his stripes, I'm working in life for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. They say, no. They say, you will vomit. Okay, I will eat again because for the law, you know, you know fight by the word. Your spirit man understand the word of God better than what Facebook is telling you. Can I tell you where Facebook and all these things were manufactured? From the realm of the sin. From the, of the law of sin and death. They carry nothing but death. So you want to believe that? Can I ask you a stupid question? In a list puzzle shop. How would that go puzzle shop, Saka? If you look at the toilet, that's where I use. So, toilet, Saka, and puzzle shop are one. So, toilet, Saka, and puzzle shop are one. Will you go and buy from that place? But you are doing it by feeding from the media. You are doing it daily. After that, you copy and crump and send. Did you see the stats, Mohoz? Ah, pala wai wa mulai. You know your place. Kimokai. Malbaten. Malbaten very kim mom holds. Very nearly 12,000 more positive. You are more. You are buying from Spaza Shops a toilet. And you are feeding your spirit man. And you don't want to hear that, ne? Unfortunately, it's the truth. God sees you as the carrier of life to the world. God sees the church of Christ as the one that ushers healing to the world. God sees the church of Christ as the one that ushers hope here on earth. But we are speaking death because we are trying to be relevant. You want to be relevant to our colleagues. You want to show them you can afford business day. Let us be the church that represent Christ. Am I talking to someone? Go out there, speak life. Speak life, re release life. It doesn't matter to speak everything else in order to please people. And in the process, you are killing your own. You know, you know what? Yeah, you know, and very much about so fatigue, Kasiba won. Yeah, no, second wave, third wave. But to all people, ah, I believe you, it will wipe them off. And you, you're forgetting that you got a mother also. You got a grandmother, you got a father. You are speaking that language. You can't. I've given you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That should be your word. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Pastor, what do I do when I, when I feel the symptoms? Go for the word. Go for the word. You know, learn to open your Bible and pray the word. Don't tell God why it is painful. Tell God what he said on his word. Because that is the only language that he understands. 
Because he said, when, we, when they pray, First John 5, 14, when they pray according to my will, I hear them. When I hear them, I, I will give them the petition of that which they've asked for. When you pray according to his word, he hears you. God is not waiting for you to describe your symptoms. Which angel will move because of that prayer? None. The angels of the Lord are moved when you release the word of God. Hebrews 1.14 calls them ministering spirits. Are they not ministering spirits who have been sent to minister unto those who have inherited salvation? Did you inherit salvation? You have a ministering spirit. Your own personal spiritual doctor who comes and ministers unto you. I gave you this testimony when I was home, when I was not feeling good. After my father prayed for me, I went to sleep. In my vision, I saw angels removing things from my blood. Like literally in my blood. No operation, nothing. When I woke up, I woke up well, healed, perfect. Why? The ministering angels came. The ministering spirits came. They ministered unto me. For the just shall live by faith. You cannot carry the name of Jesus and walk like a victim. No, no, no. In closing, when Jesus Christ, no, sit down. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. You, you are all too fast. <laughs> In closing, when Jesus Christ was calling upon Lazarus from the dead, I, I, I want us to, to do this analogy. Lazarus, are your lungs waking? I'm about to raise you from the dead. No, no, Mrut, only one is waking. Okay, I'm going to fast. Lazarus, I'm back. How are they now? Are your lungs working? Uh, one and a half. No, could you let me stay here faster, Lazarus? It's my fault. No, nothing like that happened. Lazarus, come forth. All the organs of his body. After four days of not waking, after four days of being dysfunctional, after four days of blood not flowing through them, they begin to function again instantly. They didn't go in there with, the, with those machines. Zoop. One, two, three. Zoop. No, 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 no. The word. So Lazarus, they say, why did Jesus Christ has to call Lazarus? He called you who are dead, wake up. Everybody who was dead was going to wake up. He called Lazarus because he had a relationship with Lazarus. He knew that Lazarus and him, spiritually, they connect. When he said, Lazarus, come forth, he knows that by the spirit man of Lazarus will override the flesh and the soul and the reasoning capacity of Lazarus. They will have no choice but to come forth. It is a Lazarus be healed. I want you to stand up. I want you to call forth, you know, as, I, as I'm preaching, I'm picking up people. You, you are not sick because, because, because uh, your, your immune system is weak. You are sick because you are stressing. You are sick because you, you have lost the capacity to, to eat. You, are, you, are, you have stressed yourself to sickness. I'm not going to call you forth. Wherever you are, I want you to begin to call forth your health. To begin to call forth your health. Jesus Christ died for what you are going through right now. It doesn't matter what type of mental issues of mental or stress 
No, he died for that too. He carried all your infirmities. And he wants to make you whole. Third John 2 said, Beloved, I wish that you may prosper and be in what? In health as your soul prospers. What is the prosperity of the soul? When you are stress-free. How do you become stress-free? Can I tell you one, 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 one trick of being stress-free? You are a post office, not a warehouse. Can I, can, can I state myself? When issues come to you, they are not coming for storage. You pass them forward to God. You are just a post office. They are coming for you so that you can release the word of God as you pass them through. Some of, some of the things that you are going through, maybe your children are supposed to go through them in 20, 30 years to come. But God is saying, no, let this pass this generation. They're going to pass through the one who's strong in faith. The one whom I'm given authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. So pass through these things. Don't store them. You are not a warehouse. Because, because I will call you post night, not post office. Man, lift up your hands. The children of God who are here, who are the beloved of Christ, treat yourself as such. Begin to pray and say, I'm taking my authority back. Pray, pray, open your mouth.